Kevin McCarthy faces pressure as clock ticks down to avoid government Attention shutdown. Government. You know what's really interesting about the government shutdown? I feel like it's so deeply unserious that nowadays, nowadays, it feels like the media is not even covering it because they're like, come on, dude. Like, it's just, it happens so fucking frequently. It happens so fucking much that, uh, it, it, and it never actually ends up being like a serious problem. And it's also something that shouldn't even exist. Like this issue should never exist anyway, that, uh, I feel like the media doesn't even take it seriously no more, you know, which is crazy. Um, so here, by the way, I posted on Instagram with some of the photo shoots, uh, photo shoot photos. Here you go. Uh, like it, engage with it. I literally had to tell them that uh, there were certain photos we couldn't use in the photo shoot because my ass looked so comically large in these fucking pants that uh, were incredibly tight that, like, it, it took away from the shirt. I was like, we can't use this one. Like, we can't use these because, like, it's just so... It's too big. Show us, please. No. Dick Serto collaborated with the military? What? Well, I already had very little respect for Dixerto, but taking a Navy sponsorship seals it. We created a game for America's Navy, but it's hard. We forgot how to beat it. Tap the link below to play from your desktop. That's such a funny fucking thing. To, the Amer American Navy is like, guys, the the fan base that we need to tackle is the Dixerto one, okay? Like, every dude, every dude that says, like, on God, Tate W under, like, Dixerto posts... Uh, that are completely unrelated to anything else that's going on. Like, every bot, those guys all have to go and download the fucking Navy game. That's a good... That's a good demo to tackle. To be fair, you are right. Dick Soto followers and fans would absolutely get recruited by a tweet. No, 100%. All right. See, this is what I mean when I say the government shutdown conversations are so boring that I literally fucking tuned it out while I was slated to cover it. Okay? Like... Kevin McCarthy faces pressure as clock ticks down to avoid a government shutdown. It's like, come on, dog. Sure. Potential government shutdown. The clock is ticking down. Another setback for Speaker McCarthy. Hardline Republicans blocked a defense spending bill from advancing as McCarthy struggles to get enough votes from his own party. Senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Good morning, Rachel. George, good morning. And this was a major defeat for House Republicans overnight. They couldn't even get enough votes to pass their own defense spending bill, raising even more questions about whether Speaker McCarthy can get the votes to avoid a government shutdown. This morning, with the clock ticking, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy facing increasing pressure to unite his party and avert a government shutdown. I don't think it's right that government shuts down, and that's why I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that doesn't happen. But the rebellion within his own ranks leaves McCarthy in a perilous situation, some even calling him a weak speaker threatening to oust him. Kevin McCarthy would never put anything above his own power and his own ambition. He's not just an ineffective leader, but a morally bankrupt one. It's the biggest test for the speaker since the debt ceiling showdown, with members of his own caucus demanding deeper spending cuts and stricter border policies, both non-starters for the Democrats in the Senate. Slapdash, because it's, it's not a serious proposal for avoiding a shutdown. The Republican proposal doesn't include any of the $24 billion. The, the motherfucking Never Kevers, baby. The Never Kevers, dude. Rise up, Never Kevers. Get involved. Okay? Get involved, get active, ruin the government. I'm such a fan. Fuck it. White House is requesting for Ukraine. McCarthy preparing to meet with Zelensky tomorrow, making no promises. Will you commit to another round of funding for Ukraine? Is Zelensky elected to Congress? Is he our president? I don't think I have to commit anything. If the government does shut down, more than 4 million government workers could lose pay, including some military troops and members of law enforcement. Money would run out for disaster relief, and 10,000 children would lose access to Head Start. With time running out, some Republicans now begging the hard right members of their party to reverse course. He came here and we took an oath when the 118th Congress began to do the people's work and to govern. And right now, we have certain individuals holding that work hostage. 
So Congress has just 11 days to avoid a government shutdown. Pretty much every Democrat and Republican here on Capitol Hill wants to avoid this, but they cannot figure out a solution on just how to do it, George. Okay, Rachel, thanks. Also today, Attorney General Merrick Garland on Capitol Hill. Yeah, Attorney General Merrick Garland will be in the hot seat testifying before the House Judiciary Committee. This will be the first time he testifies before lawmakers since the special counsels he appointed indicted both former President Donald Trump and the president's son, Hunter Biden. We are expecting this to be a contentious hearing. We know House Republicans <coughs> have long accused Garland of weaponizing the justice system, George. Okay, Rachel Scott, thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get... Why are we... Like... Petty Fresh Rogas Fuego, yeah. Their job is to pass budgets. If they can't, they shouldn't get paid. It's such a funny fucking take. Uh, because their job is technically to not uh, do that, if you're on the Republican side, at least. Like, the Republican job now is quite literally to stop. The Republican Party's job is quite literally to stop uh, the government from operating. Okay, there's a new, there's a David Dame piece that I'm going to get into in a second. But, um, you know, the Republican job, at the very least, is to stop the government from actually operating without, like, uh, without, like, legitimately stopping it, but also uh, simultaneously fucking complain about erroneous, ridiculous, uh, unimportant things that demonstrate their incompetence or how unserious they are as a collective. Um, it's awesome. It's great. And it's basically the same for right-wing parties all around the world. It's not even like, it's not even different. It's not even all that different for like Tories and shit. You know what I mean? Like it's, look to the Republican party here in America and you will see, uh, obvious, uh, comparisons, obvious comparisons to, you know, your, your own, uh, hogs in your own, uh, country, in your own nation. Um, here is John Fetterman offering to wear a suit next week if House Republicans agree to prevent a government shutdown. Fetterman on the GOP, if you don't shut down the government, I will wear a suit next week, he says. Um, I mean, you know, it's just uh, people are memeing. People are having fun with it. People are memeing around. Uh, meanwhile, you know, we're just a deeply unserious group of individuals, okay? Government shutdowns, why it happens only in America when it not, it doesn't actually it doesn't actually happen but why does it happen or why is it even a thing that will happen let's take a look why is the government constantly on the verge of shutdown is a question you might ask what well trash as always let's go to vox.com to describe it <laughs> why is this a thing that only apparently happens in the one country on the planet america is the best at uh, having unnecessary conversations over the government shutting down, unnecessary, uh, you know, warfare happening on our fucking streets, and also, uh, you know, number one at medical debt, medical bankruptcy, number one at uh, school shootings, number one at, uh, number one at, at, at mass shootings, number one at violence, number one at the prisoner population. Whew both per capita and totality mind you it's great we're so fucking good we have government shutdowns in europe too sometimes yes but your governments don't even fucking operate for the most part and the government shutdowns over something as stupid as the budget is idiotic okay it's like shutting down the stream at the top of the hour because there is a fucking three minute ad break it's not going to happen you can very easily avoid it by subscribing for five dollars or for free with a twitch prime okay it's that simple. It's that easy. All you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account or by getting gifted a sub if you are lucky. Okay? Um, here's the three-minute ad break now. No, re no reason to shut down the stream unless Twitch actually fucks up because it has been fucking up this morning. So maybe it will shut down the stream. Who knows? But here, I digress. Why is the U.S. government always matters, specifically Mars Bars Marissa? Please stop posting about the anti-trans protests in Canada. Please, I beg of you, I am going to cover it, okay? I'm going to cover your fake country, okay? I covered it yesterday extensively because your fake country got into, got into heated debates 
with another country, India, okay? A real one, a real country. Please stop, okay? Please stop before I send the troops over there and take over your fucking country and turn it into another American state, which it basically is. 90% of your population already lives on the fucking border. It's becoming increasingly more viable as global warming keeps rising global temperatures. Don't make me fucking do it. Okay, I covered Canada extensively, only talks about India. Yeah, because what the fuck am I going to talk about with Canada, man? It's like America light. It's diet America with uh, European characteristics. I will come up there. I will take it over and I will privatize your fucking health care. Do you understand? What happened was in the early 1980s, the attorney general issued two opinions that. Yeah, one America people will fucking die. Like, that's it. It's that simple. People will just, you know, that's, this is, here's the problem, man. Everybody in America loves thinking that the fucking government is just shit and it sucks and it's expensive and it's massive and it's unnecessary, but it's like without it, you're dead. Okay. Without it, you're literally dead. There are so many parts of the government and so many parts that are contracted by the government that that we have basically turned invisible through our hyper-individualist mentality, that through our hyper-individualist mentality that, that, would, that we just take for granted simply um, because it works every single fucking day. Now, what do I mean by this? A great example of this is the railroad, the, the freight trains, right? Like the, the, the not the... Uh, public transit railroads, which are also very important, but railroads in general that, you know, uh, uh, carry freight trains that carry chemicals that are a necessity for survival. It's like this kind of stuff is just completely taken for granted because all matter of collective action, like collectivization, all matter of like people working alongside one another to make all this stuff work is turned invisible uh, by these psychotic, uh, hyper-individualistic, reactionary weirdos in government, okay? It's so dumb. It's so silly. Like, yeah, the government is expensive. It's expansive and it's massive. It has awesome powers and it needs to exist, okay? Okay? That's why whenever people yell at me and they talk about like taxes, for example, like a song, don't you get mad that like you're paying European taxes? I'm in the highest tax bracket in the state of California where there's 13% income tax. All of my money is a 1099 employee, uh, which is, you know, the highest form of contractor uh, pay that you can get from a company like Amazon. I'm a 1099 employee. I'm a contracted Amazon employee, right? Um, 37% at the federal level, highest tax bracket, 13% on uh, uh, state income, okay? 37 plus 13. Lamau, that's nothing compared to Euro taxes. That's not true. What you're saying is simply untrue, okay? It's not true. If you're... A simple 1099 employee, my fucking real taxes that I pay, especially when uh, you compare the benefits I get, okay? That is, when adjusted to the European existence, okay? When you adjust it to, like, uh, what you get back, like, what your, what your government takeaway is, all of that shit... All of that shit essentially turns into uh, Americans paying significantly more in taxes and getting nothing in fucking return if they're a W-2 or a 1099 employee, okay? People make it seem like uh, in Europe, you know, you're, you, they live in socialist nations and they're just fucking... Uh, if you're living in Europe, you're living in a socialist existence and they just, like, take all your fucking... Um, they garnish your wages, basically, and you're fucked and you're screwed and blah, blah, blah. And it's like... Um, especially with, uh, with all the amenities that the government offers, 
okay, a plenty of European social democracies pay lower taxes in general. And the reason why the tax code is written that way is because it's written that way because the American society is designed around the highest earners being basketball players, you know, fucking uh, doctors, lawyers, and, uh, and, and, and other people that make the, the largest chunk of their money off of contracts, like contracted fucking, uh, like celebrities, you know what I mean? Twitch streamers. Whereas the real earners that are able to avoid taxes are in the, uh, in the C-suite. Executives, people in finance, because they're able to, uh, they're, they're not like contracted 1099. Uh, they're not contracted 1099 uh, uh, salaried employees in that regard. They're, they're, it's like a tiny marginal percentage of their actual salary comes from a W-2 salary, right? Most of their money is tied to their motherfucking uh, stocks, High value okay? stock options, are- their stock performance, their portfolio, which they can easily oftentimes uh, draw credit against. Okay. So ultimately the American tax system is basically designed to tax someone like LeBron James and not the motherfucker who owns the team. Do you understand? That's how it works. Now, Having said all of that, when people say, dude, what the fuck? Why are you, what are you doing? Like, oh, you know, don't you hate when paying, when you're paying taxes? Like a lot of that is going to war and, and, you know, bombing brown children or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that part sucks. A lot of my local taxes go directly into the pockets of the police force that ain't doing their fucking jobs anyway. Uh, a lot of my, uh, you know, a lot of the federal taxes are going directly into the pocket of the military industrial complex subsidies for mega corporations anyway um but it but there is a still a massive lump of that money that goes into things like schools roads public transportation even though there is not a lot infrastructure spending things like that things like that still get funded and that is important and that needs to exist that's why i don't mind paying taxes so um that's something to understand. Uh, you're missing the point I'm trying to make. I said, you said, no, dude, all those famous celebrities get called out time after time for tax evading. I'm not talking about people who engage in tax evasion. I'm talking about like how tax code is written. When you write tax code, you're supposed to hit every income bracket. Okay. And you're supposed to hit every kind of compensation structure. Whereas in the United States of America, compensation structure is is very limited. Like the, the taxes that we've been able to write in our code is, ve- is specifically limited to earners, okay? Waged employees. If you are making money off of capital gains, if you are a capitalist, okay, then your, your, your taxable income and the, the percentage of the, the wealth that you have accumulated over the end of a year in, a, in an annual period is significantly smaller. That's why when you look at someone's like someone like yourself, a person that works a job, the the uh, the real income that you earn or the the actual tax burden off of like how much your net worth has has moved is around 30-40%, whereas for the the uh, the the wealthiest 1% who make their money not by being a fucking 1099 employee, or uh, uh, a W-2 uh, wagey, the real people that make their uh, income, that generate their uh, wealth year over year, that keep expanding on their wealth, those guys pay like literally 1% of their uh, entire uh, earnings over the year. Yes, long-term held stock is capped at 15%, and that is by design, okay? That's it. That is by design. Uh, a, A major part of... A major part of, for example, a major part of the issue with CEO compensation is that CEO compensation uh, uh, being pegged to stock performance and CEO compensation being largely made through stock performance and stock options 
was the reason why CEO compensation skyrocketed from like 15 to 1 in comparison to the average salary to 400 to 1 in 2023. That is directly a consequence of the CEO compensation structure changing to what I just mentioned to you, okay? CEOs don't fucking make money off of like uh, direct salaries. They make money off of their stock options. They make money off of like the company's stock going uh, bananas mode, okay? That's how this works. And, and um, this also is tied into the reality that, for example, okay, this also is tied into the reality that when, when uh, all of these, like, ProPublica style, uh, you know, or, or the international consortium of journalists get together and they, like, do this deep dive and uncover, like, uh, tax shelters, like, offshoring, the concept of offshoring, they always find, like, European uh, leaders or even Zelensky or fucking, I don't know, some, like, despotic dictator or whatever that has sheltered their assets in an island, right? Why are there never any Americans on there? Is it because they know to avoid those places? Is it because they are, uh, you know, is, is it because the ICJ is actually, like, led by the CIA or something and only, like, hits America's fucking foreign adversaries? No. I love a good conspiracy about America being fucking bad and the CIA being involved in shit, but the major reason as to why you never see American fucking names on there is because Americans don't have to go to the Cayman Islands. They can go to Delaware. They can go to South Dakota. They can go to America to shelter their fucking assets because America is one gigantic tax haven. That's how this shit works. Why in the ever-loving fuck would you have to, like, move your assets offshore to hide them from government scrutiny when you can just legally do that here under the existing tax code? Okay? That's it. How the fuck do we get here? Oh, I was talking about how important it is, how important it is that the government still operates regardless, and although we do pay, although we do pay uh, a... Uh, a ton of taxes as American citizens in comparison to our European counterparts with not many amenities being offered to us. There's still plenty of things that we take for granted that absolutely just has to work for you to continue existing in the way that you do. None of this shit is on auto. That's different though. Belgium is not a real country and it just goes without having a government. There's just like places in Europe that I refuse to call countries that uh, just will go for extended periods of time without just having a government, okay? Which is dumb, but it's still somehow not as fucking dumb as 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 having a government, a self-imposed government shutdown because of a made-up reason. Such a funny thing, too, because it's like, like, oh, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder why. It's because the Republicans have won, okay? The Republicans spiritually defend American capitalism openly and better than the Democrats do, okay? That's it. They do a better job of defending capitalism than the Democratic Party does, at least like at least on the on the front of um I mean at, at least aesthetically, okay? And as a consequence of that, as a consequence of that, we've gotten to a point where they they were able to basically uh, eviscerate the the duty of the federal government. They've done it. They've starved the beasts out perfectly, and uh, they get zero repercussions from their voters for doing so. There's no punishments for starving out the beast, and their actual voter base likes it they they love that shit they personally love that shit but what are you supposed to do american person can't they just say fuck you i quit and get a job that actually pays wages and doesn't have you work for free i don't understand this entire thing how fucking insane no man you can't do that the entire point of this is like they have to keep working first of all they can't just no one can just like quit and get another job so that that's number one can government work is not unionized? A lot of uh, the public sector is unionized, as a matter of fact. I mean, it's like one of the... In comparison to the private sector, the public sector has uh, more unions than the private sector. It's just that 
there are certain jobs that you just can't fucking quit. You know what I mean? Or you, you just can't stop working even if you don't get paid because you, everyone would die. Um, all right. Quote. Let's get to what our uh, salaried public servants love doing, which is, of course, not a good job at all. A bad job. Deliberately a bad job. It is by design. Here we are. Here it is. This is what the this is what the Republican Party actually does. Okay, let's take a look. Quote, Mr. Weiss has full authority to bring cases in other jurisdictions if he feels it's necessary. That was your response, Attorney General, to Senator Grassley's question on March first, twenty twenty three. You just referenced it when Mr. Bishop was questioning you. Only problem is he'd already been turned down by the U.S. Attorney in the District of Columbia, Mr. Graves. So he didn't have full authority, did he? I had an extended conversation with uh, Senator Grassley at the time. We briefly touched on the Section 515 question and how that process went. I'm, I've my never been suggested. My point's real simple, Mr. Garland. You said he had complete authority, but he'd already been turned down. He, he wanted be. to bring an action in the District of Columbia, and the U.S. Attorney there said, no, you can't. And then you go tell the United States Senate under oath that he has complete authority. I'm going to say again that uh, no one had the authority to turn him down. They could refuse uh, to partner with him. They could you not. You can use whatever you, you, language. They refuse to partner is turning down. Well, it's not the same under a well-known Justice Department practice. Here's why the statute of limitations question is important that Mr. Bishop was getting at just a few minutes ago. I don't understand why uh, Jim Jordan is upset when uh, justice is not being served. Um, you know, quite ironic that he's the guy who's, like, leading the helm here considering his own background of, like, ignoring justice like when uh, a wrestling coach under his uh, watchful eye was just like systematically raping a bunch of students. That was really interesting. Um, he's over here talking about like, wow, I can't believe you were, you, were, you were denying justice being served in the Hunter Biden situation. How fucking, how insane. It's like, bro, maybe, maybe Jim Jordan isn't the best guy. You know, maybe Jim Jordan is not the best guy in general, but certainly not the fucking best guy to talk about, you know, obstructing justice or whatever. To go. Here's why it's important. You let the statute of limitations lapse for 2014, 2015. Those were the years with the felony tax charges where Hunter Biden was getting uh, income from Burisma. Here are four facts that I think are so important. Hunter Biden was put on the board of Burisma, made a lot of money, got paid a lot of money over those years. A couple million bucks. He wasn't qualified. Fact number two, he wasn't qualified to be on the board of Burisma. Not my words, his words. He said he got on the board because of his last name. Why the fuck is this, like, something related to the current charges and, like, Merrick Garland? Like, why? I, I, I don't, like, what? Like, are you the better business bureau for the Ukrainian government or something? Like, what the fuck's happening? Like, yeah, he, he absolutely debated the Ukrainian company Burisma into thinking that he had a lot more clout than he actually did. Like, they didn't hire him because, like, he had profound knowledge over energy. They hired him because he made it seem like he had an in at the White House because his daddy was the VP at the time, which was just a lie. So what does Jim Jordan have to do with this? Like, why is Jim Jordan talking about this as though he is the Better Business Bureau for Ukraine? Like, defending the, uh, you know, defending the the profit-backed interest of a company that no longer even exists, Burisma, a Ukrainian company that no longer exists, and is directing these questions to the motherfucking AG. The brand, as Devin Archer said when he was under oath and we deposed him. Fact number three, Burisma executives told Hunter Biden, we're under pressure, we need help. Fact number four, Joe Biden goes to Ukraine, leverages our tax money, American people's tax money, to get the prosecutor fired who was applying the pressure. Like, all of this shit is, is not only patently false, but, like, there are people in the Republican Party that were pressuring and, like, wrote a bipartisan letter to Congress to fire Victor Shokin, who was not pressuring Burisma, but instead was protecting them from international scrutiny. Interestingly But also, what does this have to do 
with the ongoing investigation. Um, what does this have to do with like Attorney General Merrick Garland not doing a good enough job with the Hunter Biden pro? It's irrelevant fanfic. These guys are supposed to be agents of the state. They're supposed to be, you know, making sure that people follow the law and conduct investigations into people who are violating the law. And of course, they're susceptible to outside political pressure. They always are. And part of that is also being extra scrutinizing of, uh, you know, Hunter Biden, the Joe Brandon fail son, and like hitting him on charges that otherwise uh, no one else would really get uh, uh, glazed over. Okay. But this goes beyond that. The fact that there is already justice being served in the Hunter Biden gun charges and the Hunter Biden tax evasion circumstance uh, means that like they, their pressure has already worked. Now they're just like sad that that pressure is not amounting to uh, Joe Biden getting like uh, impeached or some shit or the attorney general not like arresting, uh, not immediately going up to Hunter Biden's house and like arresting him under false charges. Like what the fuck do you want? Enough. That fact is entirely consistent with what the confidential human source told the FBI and they recorded in the 1023 form. The same form, Mr. Ray didn't want to let this committee and the Congress. The 1023 form is also, as we covered before, done by complete anonymity. It's like going to a drop-down FBI that what he's talking about here. Oh, God, why do I even know the minutia of this kind of shit? It's so stupid. It is so stupid to know these things. I just, I hate that I know this. It's so dumb. It's so irrelevant. I will never forgive the Republican Party for making me learn about things that are so stupid. It's a tip line, you fucking asshole. You could just go there right now and write a tip. You know how many, you know, thousands of fucking things are reported to the FBI by mentally ill people, charlatans, you know, just made up shit. Okay, you could go there and be like, Jim Jordan uh, refused to, Jim Jordan obstructed uh, justice when his his wrestling coach at Ohio State was raping students, and you could put that tip in, and that would, of course, be a valid one, okay? It's just that not all confidential information is workable intelligence, intelligence that you can act on, and it's so stupid to just be like, oh, my God, like, uh, uh, there was a tip uh, from a confidential informant. It's like, yeah. It's an anonymous tip from a drop-down menu on the FBI.gov website. Get the fuck out of here. See, that all happened. That all happened. And what I'm wondering is why you guys let the statute of limitations lapse for those tax years that dealt with Burisma income. There's one more fact that's important, and that is that this investigation was being conducted by Mr. Weiss, an appointee of President Trump. You will, at the appropriate time, have the opportunity to ask Mr. Weiss that question, and he will no doubt address it in the public report that will be transmitted to the Congress. I don't know the answer to did those questions. Did they forget? Did the lawyers just like let it, did they just like, oh, darn, we let it, did they, were they careless? I expect that won't be what he says, but uh, because I you promise- You know that's not the case, because as Mr. Bishop pointed out, they had a tolling agreement. They had, they talked to Hunter Biden's defense counsel and say, let's extend the statute of limitations. And then at some point they made an intentional decision to say, we're going to let the statute of limitations lapse. And I want to know who decided that and why they did it. Mr. Weiss was a supervisor of the investigation at that time and at all times. He made the necessary appropriate decisions and you'll be able to ask him that question and he will. You know why they did it. Everyone knows why they did it. May not say it, but everyone knows why they did it. They did the Baris, those tax years. That's that that dealt with the pre, that involved the president. It's one thing to have a gun charge in Delaware. That doesn't involve the president of the United States. Wait, what? Wait, what? No, it doesn't. Why would it be? Why would it involve? Why would it involve the president? <clears throat> Bro, you could just fucking say whatever, dog. It's crazy. Okay. You could just straight up say whatever the fuck you want, homie. It's awesome. Nuts. Nuts. But Burisma? Oh, my. That goes right to the White House. We can't have that. And we can slow walk this thing along. We can even extend the statute of limitations.
It's also idiotic because it's like, th- why have, <laughs> why even ask him questions if you're just going to make shit up? Which, by the way, very effective strategy, mind you. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and act like it's not a very effective strategy. It really is. Okay? Truly is. Patience, and then we can intentionally let it lapse. And we know this investigation was slow. Here's what everyone said. Shapley said, DOJ slow walked the investigation. Ziegler, slow walking in the approvals of everything. This happened at the Delaware's attorney's office and DOJ tax level. Mr. Sobosinski, the FBI agent said, I would have liked to th- see things move faster. Ms. Holly said the same. Every witness we've talked to said this thing was slow walked, and we know why. They slow walked it long enough to let the statute of limitations run so they wouldn't have to get into Burisma. Tell me where I'm wrong. Will the gentleman think, yield? No, I'm asking the, uh, no. Mr. Garland the question. I think I've tried to make clear that I don't know the specifics of the investigation. Much of what you are describing occurred uh, during the Trump administration, during a uh, Justice Department appointed by President Trump. No, it didn't. This is four and a half years of this investigation. We're talking about the last few years. Your statement was just this year, March 1st, to, to Senator Grassley. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was trying to respond to your descriptions of what the uh, uh, IRS um, um, uh, uh, agent said about certain statute things. statute of limitations is six years. That lapsed. That lapsed here in, in, the, in the Biden on administration. The, on the statute of limitations, I um, will say again, that the explanation for why the statute of limitation was lapsed, if it was, has to come from Mr. Weiss. My time is this. Let me ask one, la- one last question real quick here. Uh, who decided that David Weiss would stay on as U.S. attorney? Look, uh, this had occurred at, before I came. Mr. Weiss had been uh, kept on. I promised the... Uh, uh, no, I didn't say you can walk all through that. I said, who decided? The White House decided. Mr. Weiss... Right? They serve at the pleasure of the uh, president, right? Mr. Weiss was. Joe Biden point. decided to keep David Weiss as U.S. Attorney. Uh, you weren't sworn in until March. He was. He was. He was. He was. He was, dis- they, he was told he was going to stay on. Wait. So. So what does that mean? Like, what's the implication? Like it, it, that that they just knew that Mr. Weiss was going to be uh, Joe Brandon's guy or something. Like I don't get it. Yeah, they kept him on. Partially because Democrats love the the. Uh, Democrats love the aesthetics of impartiality, even if it doesn't fucking matter or make sense. Like they just, they always want to, they, they're, they're rigid institutionalists. And that is the reason why they uh, will do everything in their power to make it like, they will do everything in their power to be like, look at us. We're doing the right things. Like they're such fucking little uh, boy scouts. You know what I mean? I don't get it. In February. Pretty fundamental question. Who decided David Weiss was going to stay as U.S. Attorney in Delaware? Mr. Mr. Weiss, Chairman, your time has your, expired. Mr. Chairman, your time has expired. I'm waiting for an answer now. And I'll- I think in this circumstance, Merrick Garland could just literally get up and say, I did everything right and they indicted me, okay? Because that's precisely what's happening. Well, the, you asked the question after your time had expired already. Point of order. Gentleman can respond, then I'll go to Ms. Jackson Lee. They keep believing in the good faith of the Republicans and keep getting burned. Okay, first of all, I would say that if I believe that the Democratic Party simply did not know what the Republicans were doing. They know what they're doing. They don't even give a fuck. They're not real institutionalists because if they were real institutionalists, sometimes they would have to fucking fight dirty, okay? If you want to truly preserve the institutions, you have to fight dirty and you have to make sure that Republicans come nowhere near power because Republicans will always, always destroy, crumble the integrity of the institutions because they'll do anything and everything they can to basically uh, get their agenda across, even if they don't have the Democratic majority, which they rarely ever do on a lot of their issues, right? So the, the institutionalists in the Democratic Party end up destroying the institutions by looking the other way as the Republicans crumble them and weaponize them and use it to their advantage. So they're not. They're not real institutionalists. They just are cowards. They are not as honest as the Republicans are with their terrorism, okay? So they just kind of rely on the Republicans doing everything, being the bad guy, and they're the good cops. They're the good cops who are like, oh, man, uh, oh, no, what can we do? What can we fucking do? There's not much I can do. So how do you guys think I did it my first day as the chairman of the Federal Reserve? Wait, what? Mr. Weiss was the um, special 
U.S. attorney from the District of Delaware when I came on. He had been appointed by President Trump. I promised that he would be permitted to stay on for this investigation, and that is what happened. Gentlemen, Mr. Texas, Chairman, Mr. The Chairman. Gentleman from uh, New York, Mr. Chairman, I believe you misquoted uh, from the transcript of the Senate of the Senate hearing. I therefore ask unanimous consent to enter into the record the entire transcript of the Senate hearing. With, without objection, but I, I didn't Thank you. just quote what Mr. Garland said. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the, the gentleman floor. Matt Gates grills Merrick Garland. You're blissfully ignorant. Like, they just have to sit there and get fucking nutted on, okay? Uh, this is this is a part of just, like, being a Democrat or being an operative in, uh, of the Democratic Party. You just kind of have to sit there and... Let these fucking idiots uh, uh, just shit all over you, okay? Non-fucking-stop. Floor is recognized. Five minutes. I guess I'm just wondering, Mr. Attorney General, has anyone at the department told President Biden to knock it off with Hunter? I mean, you guys are charging Hunter Biden on some crimes, investigating him on, on others. You've got the president bringing Hunter Biden around to state dinners. Has anyone told him to knock it off? <laughs> Our job in the Justice Department is... <laughs> Has anyone told him to knock it off? <laughs> Bro, there is one aspect of this that goes, I guess, somewhat unnoticed. Even I don't really cover it, but, like, Donald Trump Jr. and Jared Kushner and Ivanka were directly involved in the administration, like, directly. Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, was put in charge of, like, facilitating deals with Gulf nation states. Like, what are we doing right now? And there was a direct quid pro quo with Kushner's properties. Like, that part of the conversation doesn't even get any play whatsoever. Because, like, I guess it's fine when Trump does it, and it's bad if, like, Joe Biden doesn't even fucking do it. But we can say that he did it. I hate this conversation because everyone is fucking corrupt. But there is this annoying, stubborn part of my brain that has to give you all of the details and all of the facts in a situation like this and it ends up putting me in a position where I inevitably have to defend the facts of the matter, which end up being on the side of the Democrats in a stupid fucking low stakes uh, a conversation like this one. Okay? It just doesn't make any sense. It sucks. It's always like, yeah, the, the Democrats and Republicans are having a mid-off, but the Republicans are so far ahead of the game uh, on their, on their midness that, you know, they just kind of end up having me uh, shit all over them, and I hate them for it. To pursue our cases without reference uh, to what's happening in the outside world. But just yes or no, have you done that? That is what we do. So it's a no? No one that I know of has spoken to the White House about the Hunter Biden case. I'm wondering of course then. Not. Okay, I got it. I got it. So Hunter Biden is selling art to pay for his fifteen thousand dollar a month rent in Malibu. How can you guarantee that the people buying that art aren't doing so to gain favor with the? What? What the fuck, bro, 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 bro? Donald Trump unceremoniously did not put his assets into a blind trust and simply let his sons control the assets, okay? Like, control his businesses. Because Biden doesn't have an equivalent here, Republicans can't even hit him on this, so now they're fucking saying that, like, what if Hunter Biden and any kind of commerce he engages in is actually done at the behest of, like, uh, gaining favor in the Biden administration? It's like, it's, it's so... It's so frustrating, dude. It is so fucking annoying. Fuck Hunter Biden. I hope he goes to jail, okay? Fuck it. He'll, he'll be the king of jail, all right? He'll have a great time in there. Maybe he'll uh, develop his crack addiction again, okay? I don't care about Hunter Biden, but, like, the idea 
that like these guys are the watchdogs of corruption when they are the very beneficiaries of said corruption and have done it in a more flagrant, more transparent way with no, like with years and years of the Democratic Party crying foul and not really doing anything about it is so frustrating. It's fucking nutty. Two of the guys that are being, this guy, investigated by the federal authorities because his, him and his bestie were trafficking minors, okay? His bestie's in jail for sex trafficking minors. He was under that investigation. He was able to somehow drop the investigation. It was reopened, if I'm not mistaken, okay? He literally went to Donald Trump to ask for a pardon. And also, there's Venmo records of him uh, paying for the Venmo of a minor, okay? Like, the, these are... Like, they're criminal on their own lives and in their own misconduct, okay? Not only that, but on top of that, when you look at the, the, the Democratic Party and their feckless ineptitude, like, there were 300-plus ethics violations in the Trump administration in, like, the first year, okay? There was a new ethics violation for, for every day of the goddamn year, pretty much. And none of these investigations happened. None of these investigations happen. What the fuck? And then these guys can't even tie Joe Biden to anything, like any kind of malpractice, any kind of anything that even looks shady. So they're just literally fucking sitting here chirping using tax dollars on how, well, if you bought a fucking piece of ugly ass art from Hunter Biden's like art collection, who's to say you didn't do it because you wanted to gain favor with the White House? How can you fucking sit there if you are a Democrat, okay, if you're a lover of the Democratic Party, or if you're a Democratic operative, how can you just fucking sit there and not just want to hurt them? You know what I mean? You have power. Why don't you actually operate in the way that these guys claim you operate in an openly and flagrantly partisan way? Why don't you do that? Just do it. They do it all the fucking time. They, they're doing it now. They're doing it when they're not in power, okay? I hate this, like, civility bullshit. Just do it. And by the way, what, I'm, what I am uh, uh, asking is not even uh, something that will truly shake uh, the, the material hierarchy that we exist under. It's just, like, do politics, like, it's not even anti-capitalist actions that I'm demanding from the Democratic Party. It's just simply, like, don't be such fucking big-ass pushover bitches, okay? Like, I personally feel like doing the things that the Republican Party does, because politics is all about spite, as Matt Chrisman perfectly demonstrated, in America, neither side has any interest that, or, or any belief that the government is going to improve their material circumstances, their material realities. They don't have any belief in the government doing the right thing. So politics is now just a game of like hurting my opponent, right? Both sides are spite driven, but the Democrats won't even do the spite driven shit. Just do it. Just play, play the fucking game. Republicans constantly threaten that like, oh, if you open up this can of worms, well then we're going to use it against you. And it's like, they always use it against the Democratic Party. Who gives a shit? Just do it. Make better content, you know? Stand up. It's so fucking annoying. And I do not understand, like, what benefit this has. If anything, if the Democratic Party at least, like, stood up for itself and, like, uh, you know, did these, like, erroneous, silly, long, comprehensive investigations, which they would actually be significantly more fruitful than the Republican side doing it to the Democrats because American corruption is streamlined. It's legalized, right? And the Democrats play by the book. Republicans, on the other hand, in many instances, don't play by those books. Don't play by those rules, right? Like, that's the problem here. Because what they're talking about with respect to Hunter Biden isn't necessarily, uh, you know, morally righteous. It's not. It's not. Hunter Biden is absolutely a, a beneficiary of nepotism. He got a job that he did not deserve to have. And he uh, got a shit ton of money for it. He might have duped the Ukrainian authorities and the, and the Ukrainian uh, energy uh, company Burisma to, to make them think that he had a lot more access in the, in the Obama White House than he actually did, but it doesn't matter. Like, he, he was being corrupt. 
Okay? That that much is true. But they got it too. Just fucking, just, you know, sling back at them. Push, don't be such fucking pushovers. I feel like if you did the same shit to the, to the Republican Party, not on like uh, some face-saving bullshit like, oh, everything is Russia, everything is Russia, everything is Russia. Hillary Clinton lost, not because she was unlikable, but because of Russia. And instead of doing all that shit, like look into the actual financial misdeeds of the Trump administration, like the Democratic Party, or not necessarily the Democratic Party, but the criminal justice system has so far, okay, and hold the Republicans accountable a little bit, I feel like that would at least garner instill a little bit of confidence in the average American, in the average Democratic Party voters' minds that like, oh yeah, they are actually giving the hurt where they do hurt. Because think about it this way. I'm no fan of the Democratic Party, but I certainly enjoy watching Republicans squeal, right? I love that shit. I still follow all the Mac cases members on Insta before they all lock down to get to see some goofy pics of them. Hell yeah. Like even someone like myself who absolutely is no fan of the fucking Democratic Party can at least have a little bit of fun watching these goddamn hogs squeal. You know what I mean? Make them squeal. Uh, one says, don't be a pussy about the border cages. And the other side says, don't be a dick about the cages. Yeah, pretty much. They think decorum keeps them in power. Look at the dress code shit. I mean, that that part is also stupid. Everyone thinks that that's important. Both Democrats and Republicans, like institutionalists, care about that shit. Democrats don't push back because if they did, they would win more often. Then they would lose a dichotomy of Republicans bad and they would benefit from Republican bullshit policy and laws. I guess. I don't know. I just... They should spend their time using their money on making a biopic about Hunter Biden. At least that would be entertaining for everyone. Not this boring waste of time and bullshit they drag U.S. dollars into. They should also fucking pay for the subscription of every single Hassan Abi head for the crime of making us watch this, okay? Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, and at least Hassan Abi heads should be government-subsidized, okay, in the form of a $5 a month subscription or a free one in the form of a Twitch Prime or by gifted subs, you know? The government should be gifting subs to Hassan Abi heads at the top of the fucking hour because... Uh, there's a three-minute ad break coming, and they don't have any money left because they just fucking dumped their entire paycheck on the new motherfucking ideology drop that just came out. They got the live and alive tea. They got the get bread or get dead uh, crew neck. This one apparently is sold out already, from what I understand. Darkest fortune. Thank you for the five two one gifted subs. Misus YB. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Who are you on the phone with? You really want me to fucking answer that, dude? Your mom, brother. What do you mean? Everything is sold out? No, it's not. Is it? No shot. No, it's not sold out. The Get Bread or Get Dead crew neck is not. The the Hassan hoodie, the Hass anger management is not sold out. I love that one. I love both of the, the crew neck and the hoodie. They're fucking fire. I mean, I love all of this one. The Marlboro one sold out, though, immediately. The Live and Alive tee, the Double XL, has been sold out, apparently. I'm looking at it now. Han Hulves, thank you for the five gifted subs. Not your Empire tee, the XL and the Double XL is sold out. God damn. Shit is getting sold out. Crewnecks are still in stock, luckily. False Consciousness tee, the Large XL, 2XL, 3XL, all sold out. Holy fuck. Damn, we got a bunch of big boys in the building. Um, but yeah, the hoodie and the crew neck have not, which is surprising. I thought those were the ones who would go first. You see Schumer is voting on getting at least the three heads of the military filled. Print more than four shirts per size. God damn it. <laughs> Brother, we are not. If you think we didn't print a fuck ton, I don't know what to tell you, okay? Can you explain why streamers are doing drops that sell out in the first few hours? No, we... Dude, because... The real reason is because streamers have incredibly fucking passionate fan bases. Uh, and and that's... That's usually where it comes from. The reality is that, like... That's it. Because I, I, it's not like... It's not like we don't um, make enough. We do. What the fuck is going on? My connection timed out on my Caterino. Uber capitalist is on. Hell yeah, baby. 
Yes, all matter of commerce is done under uh, capitalism. The president. All right, let's get back to this shit. The job of the Justice Department is to investigate criminal allegations. We have information. Are you investigating this? I mean, someone who bought Hunter Biden's art ended up with a prestigious appointment to a federal... Thrown in jail for having the worst fucking taste in art, okay? Associate Devin Archer told us that Hunter sold the appearance of access to then Vice President Biden. Are you confident he has stopped doing that? I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Hunter Biden associate Devin Archer told us that Hunter sold the appearance of access to then Vice President Biden. Are yes. you confident he has stopped? I'm going to say again that all these matters are within the purview of Mr. Weiss. I have not interfered with them, and yeah, I do not. Yeah, but if you were confident that he had stopped, you could And I do not intend to interfere with him. I want to, so it was a lot of Chinese money that was working its way through these shell companies into the accounts of the Biden family. So the China initiative was set up during the Trump administration at the Department of Justice to go after the malign influence of, of the Chinese Communist Party. And the Biden Justice Department dissolved the China initiative. So I guess I'm wondering, does the department have any documents uh, that would detail the basis for why you got rid of the China initiative that President Trump had set up? The Assistant Attorney General for the National Security Division gave a long speech which explained that. He has testified. Yeah, they have a live migrant cross-border cam, dude, which is fucking insane, but, you know, I guess unsurprising. Before Congress several times, we'd be happy to provide you with What's the basis? Just tell us all now. What, why, why was the China initiative dissolved? What, uh, the, what the Assistant Attorney General said was that we face attacks from four nation states, North Korea, China, <clears throat> Russia, and Iran. And we need- What's so bad about that? Really? You can't tell what's like fucking gross and, and weirdly, uh, y you can't figure out what's like gross and dehumanizing about that. You can't figure out what the reason for why they have that down there. It's to, like, strike fear in the minds of reactionary Americans that, like, there's, like, this genuine invasion happening. We're so broken. We're so broken that we don't even have, like, we, we don't even understand. Like, putting a camera on human beings, like, it's a goddamn reality TV show. Like, they're fucking zoo animals. Doesn't even, like, strike a chord in people's minds. Like, it's not even a red flag at this point. You know what I mean? Cross Bond 3S. Thank you for the five gifted. We need to focus our attention on the broad range of these attacks. Sometimes we but, don't but wait know. A second. You don't, are you saying that North Korea has the same malign influence risk to the United States as the Chinese Communist Party? Are you, are you trying to represent there's some parity there? Because cause here's what it looks like. It looks like the Chinese gave all this money to the Bidens, and then you guys came in and got rid of the China initiative, and it was successful. Like I This part is really funny because, like, imagine thinking that Hunter Biden has any influence on American Chinese affairs and not like the trillions of dollars of commerce and the capital owners that represent those interests. Like it's Hunter Biden getting like, uh, you know, like a million dollar emerald or whatever the fuck that actually completely busted open this Chinese nut, you know? That's awesome, dude. Yeah, no, totally. It's that... The American government is that penetrable that, like, it's not actually built as this bourgeois state specifically to represent the interests of capital owners and, and uh, whatever capital owners want uh, is going to happen. And capital owners, obviously, regardless of the incredibly reactionary rhetoric, the xenophobic rhetoric that you hear about fucking China, that, like, there is trillions of dollars of back-and-forth trade at play. They are our manufacturing hub still, Okay. That, like, that is not a part of the decision-making process, but instead it's, like, Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden is, is capable of changing the dynamic with China. Like, for the record, they're talking about all this, like, Ivanka, deal, Ivanka Trump's deals with China weren't suspect. They were, but it doesn't matter because Ivanka Trump has absolutely no way of, like, changing the outcome of what the across the board American policy is going to be. Okay. The chamber of commerce is not going to let fucking Ivanka Trump change foreign policy with respect to China. 
if there was one administration that would be nutty enough to like actually go against the interests of the Chamber of Commerce, it would be the Trump administration, let's be real. But even then, it's very unlikely. And Kushner and his dealings with the Saudi government is entirely different because Saudi Arabia is our fucking allies. They can't use it in the other direction, okay? Ukraine, supposed to be a, a client state, right? Hunter Biden can't change the military-industrial complex's interests in Ukraine. Hunter Biden can't change the American foreign policy apparatus and their overarching interests in Ukraine and wanting to bring in Ukraine to the Western sphere of influence. Like Hunter Biden can't be the standalone guy that says, no, we're going to stop that from happening. That is absolutely psychotic. You can only go and lean in the direction, if you could, of, of whichever way the, the corrupt money is flowing. That's why it's hilarious that these guys are like, Hunter Biden did this. It's like, well, did he? Did he do that? Because did he also, uh, I don't know, get, did he get uh, the IMF and the World Bank to also want Victor Shogun to be fucking uh, 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 taken out of power? Did he get the CIA to want Victor Shogun to be taken out of power? Did he get the NGOs to want, uh, did, he, did he get the NGOs in Ukraine that are working and civil society organizations that are working in Ukraine that are part of the apparatus, the foreign policy apparatus, to want Victor Shogun out of power? How did he do that? How is he so powerful? He must be the most powerful, most charismatic man in America. He's the greatest, the greatest foreign lobbyist in the history of the United States. I saw one rationale that you guys got rid of the China Initiative because it was racial profiling. But, but one of the people you convicted was a guy named Charles Lieber, who was a Harvard professor taking $50,000 a month to do China's bidding and give them whatever research was being done. Are, are you aware of the millions of dollars that moved through Rob Walker's shell companies from Chinese Communist Party entities into Biden family bank accounts? Are you aware of that? There were a lot of questions that you just asked. Let me start with the first one about North Korea. North Korea is a dangerous actor, both kinetically and with respect to cyber. But not on par with China. I'm on I'm the not, armed services I'm not in the Mr. business Attorney right General. now. Yeah, okay. The idea that, like, at first I thought he was making a joke because he was like, why would you ever compare North Korea to China? Like, I thought he was being serious in the sense that, like, you know, like, obviously, we're going to have different relations with China, which we do trade with, in, as opposed to North Korea, which is, like, basically propped up by doing cryptocurrency schemes, like, scamming crypto scammers and stealing their, like, cyber wallets or whatever, right? Um, and th that we have no trade relations with, <laughs> which, by the way, I'm fully in favor of North Korea. Uh, cyber, uh, like, basically, cyber currency, Bitcoin and the like, have created a wonderful opportunity for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or the popular Korea, if you want to call it that, uh, which I like to call it that, uh, has been able to create an entire new industry, okay? In favor of North Korea, yes. <laughs> They're fucking broke as fuck. What do you want? They, <laughs> it's, the, it's the most ethical way that they can survive, okay? If you are completely shut out from the global marketplace... If you're completely shut off in the global global marketplace, um, instead of like uh, th this is an even more victimless crime than like robbing banks. Okay, they're robbing the scammers. They stole forty three million dollars from Stake.com, dude. Like nine of that came directly out of Eddie's pockets. I mean, he has so much money he doesn't give a shit about nine million dollars being lost. But like, it's pretty funny. That, like, the only way that they can generate value, generate some some level of income, is by fucking literally stealing money from cryptocurrency people. It's such a funny way. Hassan, they are prolific ransomware actors. Yeah, I know. I mean, as long as they're, they're, they're uh, cyber... As long as their cybersecurity operations don't pertain to, like, uh, genuine, genuine victims, like, if they're fucking... Ripping crypto boys out, like that's fine. Oh, it's my, okay. It's, it makes I, you look yeah. unserious to suggest. May that. I answer your question or not? answer the question? Yeah. <laughs> DPRK GDP up one hundred percent from stake heist, dude. 
yeah, the Lazarus group is who I'm, of course, uh, referencing. Uh, also known by other monikers such as Guardians of Peace or the Who Is Team, is a cyber crime group made up of an unknown number of individuals run by the government of North Korea. While not much is known about the Lazarus group, researchers attributed many cyber attacks to them between 2010 and 2021. Originally a criminal group, the group has now been designated as an advanced persistent threat due to the intended nature, threat, and wide array of methods used when conducting an operation. Names given to cybersecurity organizations include Hidden Cobra, used by the DHS to refer to malicious cyber activity by the North Korean government in general, and Zinc by Microsoft. The Lazarus Group has strong links to North Korea. The FBI says that Lazarus, Lazarus Group is allegedly a North Korean state-sponsored hacking organization. According to North Korean defector Kim Cook Song, the unit is internally known as... North Korea as the 414 Liaison Office. North Korea benefits from conducting cyber operations because it can present an asymmetric threat with a small group of operators, especially the South Korea. They have literally no other method of like uh, engaging in global commerce or anything like that. So they just straight up fucking... They just have an army of hackers. Yeah, they're doing Jusha crimes, okay? Hacks or shit, yeah. Asymmetric threat means they're good at it? Yeah, they're too good at it with such a small group of operators is what that means. About whether or not you know about all the millions of dollars that so moved you don't want me to answer into. about North Korea. I already know the answer, and so does everyone. They're not the same risk as China. So let's get on to serious questions and serious answers. Do you know about the money that moved through Rob Walker's shell companies, yes or no? As I have said repeatedly, I have left... Matt, these matters to Mr. Weiss, I've not... For the record, I'm not saying that, like, all of the targets of the Lazarus group are, like, valid. I'm just making a joke. Okay? It's funny if they stole people's apes. Not so funny if they, like, robbed other governments that are also incredibly poor, you know? Intruded, I've not interfered, I've not to tried things. to find out it's what like he knows. It's like you're looking the other way on purpose it's, because everybody knows this stuff's happening. And you know what? People don't pay bribes to not get something in return, right? We, the, the uh, that's a self-report, homie. <laughs> the China initiative resulted in the convictions of a Harvard professor, of someone at Monsanto. So we were working against the Chinese. They paid the Bidens. And now, we're, now you're sitting here telling me that I, North Korea... This part is also fucking stupid because, like, the American government is is a is a sieve sieve is a leaky faucet. It's not a leaky faucet. It's a it's a sinking ship with respect to so many legal points of entry. Okay. Like there are so many legal points of entry and influence into the American government, uh, especially through uh, you know, 501c4s and whatnot. It's like so stupid to just be like no you know what our entry point is hunter biden's paintings like what are you saying like what what are we talking about here just set up a legal lobbying operation why the fuck do you need to do that Korea is the big threat. I'm I got to get to this one thing on January 6th. Well, I, I, so did the FBI, did the FBI lose count of the number of paid informants on January 6th? Let me did answer you? your question about China. I China want you to answer this question. Most... I only get five minutes. You've already you, sort of, I think, screwed the pooch on China. So permitted. January 6th, did you lose count of the number of federal assets? Did you lose count and order an audit? Gentlemen's time has expired. I, I get an answer to the question of did, he, did they lose count? Well, let him number? answer the question. The time has expired. The <laughs> attorney general can respond. China is the most aggressive, most dangerous Mr. adversary Mr. that General, the United the States faces, and we are doing everything within our power to rebut that, to stop that, to prevent their invasions, both kinetic, both um, and through cyberspace. And we will. Wait, what do you mean kinetic invasions? We're trying to stop the kinetic Chinese invasions. The fuck? What does that mean? How how is China invading? The United States of America, he does not mean the fucking balloon, right? I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. There ain't no fucking way, dog. Secret police stations? Stop. Ay, ay, ay. If, you, if someone that. gave that answer in your courtroom when you were a judge, you would tell them... 
I guess he means like like actual spies and shit, like the one that Eric Swalwell was fucking. Remember that one? Remember when Eric Swalwell was clapping the Chinese spies' cheeks? Such a weird point of entry. Again, who knows what? You fucking suck, dude. Wait, what? Wait, why? What did I do? The Chinese are setting up towns in our cities, Hasanabi. Yeah. And you know what's the worst part about it? The Chinese government is setting up shop in American cities in major metropolitan areas, and they're doing it right in front of our eyes. Okay? They call it Chinatown. It's really fucked up. They've made movies about it, dude. Wake up! Wake up! They were being non-responsive, and you would direct them to answer the question. Point of order, Your Honor. Time is, uh... Badgering the witness. Point of order, please. Time is expired. I I got it. I just, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was You like Your Honor? You want to stick with that? Yeah, I I was getting laughed at you call me Your Honor. Point of order either way. Okay, I understand that, too. All right. But the gentleman asked his question. Before his time expired, the Attorney General did not respond to the gentleman's question. I was hoping he would respond to the question about the confidential human sources on January 6th. He didn't respond to that. I'm sure we're going to get uh, we're uh, going to uh, get uh, an answer uh, to that uh, later. Of course, now, Mr. Chairman, there, were, there were eight the questions gentleman. before that that he was not given a chance to answer. I understand, so but I, the witness might have thought. But the witness doesn't, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Point of order: question. the witness does not control the hang time. On, hang on, exactly right. Members control the time. If they want to switch their question and focus on one more question that they'd like an answer to, I want to give the witness a chance to respond to that final question that Mr. Gates asked. He didn't respond to it. Hey, everyone. I'm... Oh, my God. Big... Okay. Moving on from the grill sesh. Okay. Let's get back to the regular order of business. Okay. That's right. The Biden crime family is still doing the dang thing. Okay, they're still doing the dang thing. That's right. Biden, as a part of the Biden crime family, is still operating under the uh, at the behest of his son, Hunter Biden, who also now wants to continue to support Ukraine. Wake up, everybody. The Brandon crime family is back. And they are vowing to continue supporting Ukraine in the address for United Nations. I'm going to go Today at the U.N. Point. General Assembly and passion speeches from President Biden and Ukraine's President Zelensky pleading with the world to keep supporting Ukraine in its fight against Russia. And they spoke, of course, to some Republicans in Congress expressed doubts about the rising cost of that war. Nancy Cordes covers the White House for us, and she's here in studio once again. Nancy, good morning to you. Good morning. Here's the challenge, Tony. World leaders may support Zelensky, but what he needs to do is to convince them to keep opening their wallets because waging war against Russia is expensive and the price of winning could be astronomical. Here in New York, his sales pitch came with a warning. Russia, he said, could be coming for other countries next. Evil cannot be trusted. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky sounded the alarm at the United Nations, accusing Russia of weaponizing everything from food prices to the energy supply and forcibly deporting thousands of Ukrainian children. Those children in Russia are taught to hate Ukraine, and all ties with their families are broken. President Biden argued Russia is counting on the world growing weary of the war and turning a blind eye. We have to stand up to this naked aggression today and deter other would-be aggressors tomorrow. Ukraine has already received hundreds of billions of dollars in U.S. and foreign aid. If you allow Ukraine to be carved up, is the independence of any nation secure? I'd respectfully suggest the answer is no. Some congressional so Republicans hot. aren't sold on another $24 billion. Leak the gym routine, King Zelensky. Leak it. Leak it. You're so sexy. Aid um, package. Where's the accountability and the money we already spent? What is the plan for victory? I think that's what... Russia waged war a, not Ukraine, dumbasses. Who's saying Ukraine is waging war, brother? The American public wants to know. Even as leaders gathered in New York, five Americans who the U.S. says were wrongfully detained in Iran celebrated their first day back on American soil. The deal to get them home included clemency for five Iranians accused of violating sanctions and the unfreezing of $6 billion in Iranian oil revenue. Businessman Siamak Namazi was reunited yes. with his brother 
after nearly eight years behind bars. It's just you feel like it's a dream. Uh, the nightmare is finally over. I would add that at each of the previous... The moment Russia attempted to block President Zelensky speaking to the U.S. Security Council, that's so funny. Okay, bro, chill. Like, you can't have it both ways. Is it bullshit? Is the U.S. Security Council bullshit? Or is it actually fucking so valid that you got to do shit? And I am of the mindset that it's bullshit. Let me tell you why. You want to know how fucking bullshit the U.S. Security Council is? The Israeli envoy had the audacity to get up and 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 put up a fucking photo uh, like like a like a FedEx king code photo that said save Iranian women while the Iranian person like the Iranian leadership was talking okay and it blew my fucking mind it's like are you joking dude what the fuck how many Palestinian women do you butcher on a daily fucking basis That's nuts, dude. Like, if there's one fucking country that should maybe shut the fuck up about human rights abuses, like rampant human rights abuses, it's like, uh, not Security Council, but General Assembly. Yeah, it, in the General Assembly. There's five Security Council meetings in which President Zelensky was invited to participate. He spoke before council members. I want to assure our Russian colleagues and everyone here that this is not a special operation by the Albanian presidency, but a continuation of a long and well-established practice of this council and today's speaking order, therefore, is in full conformity with the council's guidelines and practices. As for the second question, I have a certain difficulty to understand what's the problem because uh, OSCE has an important role. God, they're so Turk-coded, man. I'm sorry. Just Albanians are so Turk-coded. It's crazy. And uh, is uh, here because of its contribution to this meeting considered of essence. Yes, the OSCE representative here is an Albanian from North Macedonia, but if you would be more explicit towards... Is that they're never going to enter the EU? Yeah, they're Muslim, dog. The problem, I would be happy to help you. With pleasure, Mr. President. We do not believe that the arguments that you have advanced are compelling. There are a number of uh, the members of the, uh, of, the, of the Security Council that will be represented. They will in a few decades, unlike Turkey? I don't think so. No shot. No. I don't believe that at all. If, like... Thinking that, thinking that a, a predominantly Muslim nation, thinking that a predominantly Muslim nation will ever be a part of, of the European Union is, is, I think, a silly notion. It's a small country, doesn't have a big impact on the EU, doesn't matter. They're in talks with the EU, doesn't matter. Turkey's been in talks with the EU since before I was born. No fucking shot. I thought Albania was mostly atheist. <laughs> Inshallah, EU will kneel before Albania. I think a lot of people forget. Uh, I think a lot of people forget that, like, because we talk mostly about, like, American racism, people don't understand that, like, Islamophobia is a gigantic motivator. Uh, of of the the European uh, nation state European collaborative project, you know, because there's always got to be some glue that sticks it together beyond you know capitalism and capital interests, right? And the notion 
the notion that like uh, the European Union would um, allow a predominantly Muslim nation into its uh, ranks would be seen as like would be seen as is is everything that goes against the entire project. Why not? Albania is very pro EU right now. Geographically it makes more sense and is a very small, so xenophobes won't make a big deal. That's what you think, dog. Literally, guys. First of all. European countries don't even like Slavs, okay? Like, what are we talking about? Like, even Orthodox uh, Christians are considered lesser than. And you're over here talking about fucking Muslims, dude. Like, this notion, this notion that, that, like, look at the UK, brother. They don't even like Polish people. They literally fucking left because they were like, Albanians are invading our country and Polish people are invading our country. We don't want that. There ain't no fucking way UK equals EU. I mean, the UK was a part of the European Union, uh, so it's not that crazy. They literally cast aside a favorable trade partnership they had with the fucking EU, specifically to make a symbolic point about leaving so they could instill national autonomy or whatever the fuck they were talking about even though their original trade negotiations were just entirely favorable to the UK. The idea that... I know that there's a not equal sign. I know. I'm sorry. I, I misread it originally. Albania is very pro-EU right now. Turkey is a bigger population than Germany, so that is much, much, much more controversial. Admitting another Germany chances the power... Admitting another Germany changes the power politics in the EU by a lot. Albania doesn't. Uh, it's not about... It's not about the power uh, it changes. It's not just about the power changes. It's also about the, the cultural glue that holds the European Union uh, together. West, the, yeah, Western Europeans don't even like Eastern Europeans. Like, you're, you're talking about Eastern European Muslims? Get the fuck out of here, dude. No shot. Like, Muslims are the, the scarier versions of America's Mexicans, okay? Like, like Muslims are the MS-13, uh, like the, the, the MS-13 of, of Europe. Okay. Like I'm trying to give like a, like a cultural reference point to America. So they develop a better understanding of like how, uh, the European union views, um, the, the, uh, how European union views like Muslim migration to be fair, 40% of population of Christians don't matter. So that they develop the wrong understanding. White people don't even like white people. Black people don't even like black people. Everyone's racist. Hassan, safe hating Europeans, dot, dot, dot. Hassan talking about Europe is always such a riot. So that they develop a wrong understanding of Europe. Yeah, dude, I'm just lying about uh, Europe and its, uh, and its opinions on Islam. You're right. Yeah, guys, no matter what you do, just don't look it up. You can't find information on each individual EU nation state. And also just like, um, uh, and, and how much like uh, Muslim migration has been presented as an invasion by hogs and has dominated European domestic politics, like European country domestic politics uh, for the past 10 years or so. One of the impacts of America's never-ending war on terror and the destabilization it caused was that it truly galvanized white supremacists, uh, white supremacists, like out and about white supremacists, not the regular white supremacists that always existed, like the Eurofascists that uh, always had like a pan-European supremacist attitude. I'm talking straight up like, oh no, the AFD, or, or uh, I don't know, that Italian psycho, or... Uh, Marie Le Pen, which probably will be the next leader of France, by the way. Um, all of these people got back into positions of prominence over the course of the past fucking 10 to 20 years of, of screeching about Islam, okay? I just want to say that as a brown German, you're extremely accurate. Take baffles me. Like, how do you know it so accurately? Um, uh, you are right to the fucking T. It's insane. 10, 10 take brother. I have felt it in my own life. Uh, what, uh, you know, you're going to have some fucking screeching weirdos in here who are like, no, Europe is not so racist. Uh, what are you saying? It's crazy. I mean, come on. It's also always funny whenever people, 
whenever people talk to me about like not understanding the intricacies of European politics as though like, you know, European politics was not incredibly important in my development, uh, growing up in fucking Turkey, you know, come on dog. Uh, anyway, I'm European and what you're saying is completely right. Muslim people here are called roaches and suffer a massive amount of discrimination. Literally everything that goes wrong here in Europe is blamed on Muslims. But I don't mean to explain this. You lived in Europe. Well, technically, no one is going to fucking stop invalidating other people's experiences. No. Um, it's just like, it, it, it is fun when, when, uh, when the crosshairs are turned on uh, the EU and EU nations, though. It is fun when people just go, oh, that's not how it is, actually. You just don't get it. In the hall today at the head of state level, you tried to explain why the Ukrainian president is being... You're using the UK as an example of Islamophobia is insane compared to Europeans. At least they let him in. Yeah, I mean, they let him in and then they mistreat them regardless. But yes, you are correct. There are significantly worse countries as far as like allowing European, I mean, allowing Muslim refugees in, uh, Italy being the main fucking, the tip of the spear on that racism. But that's an incredibly fucking low bar, okay? Like, if we're keeping it a buck fifty, one of the only, one of the best countries as it pertains to Muslim migration or refugee acceptance is Germany, okay? And you know, as a Turkish person, of course, I feel some type of way about that, considering that like Germany has utilized the Turkish labor force and has regularly mistreated said Turkish labor force for a very long time, which has created enclaves and cultural disagreements and, and even um, uh, put a lot of German Turks at the, uh, at the crosshairs of, of uh, racialized violence. So then there's always, uh, then there's also uh, the, the uh, number of refugees that they've taken in uh, and how that has developed, that has developed a, uh, a, 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 you know, the, the, to the, that has helped the rise of the AFD, basically. My German friend tried to call anyone not white a guest worker, and he himself, his dad is Croatian and Turk, but he still hates a bunch of German Turks. Yeah, I mean, his dad's Croatian. That's probably where it comes from. Uh, being Croatian and, and living in Germany, hmm. I wonder what his grandfather was doing. All right, all right, let's just move on. The moment Russia attempted to block President Zelensky, we're talking about that. Prioritized, however, the procedure, uh, this is nothing to do. Yeah, how, did the, how did the Croat get to Germany? Uh, you know, what, what was he doing? What was going on there, you think? I don't know. I mean, I'm just asking. What, what, what it is. Ask him what his grandfather did. Who knows? Who knows what he was doing? do with the procedure for the Security Council, you can understand the logic. When we discuss Somalia here, the president of Somalia spoke first here, but he was the only president from among those present. Uh, there are indeed precedents related to other files on the Security Council's agenda, but and uh, a specific practice has unfolded linked to the specificities, specificities of certain regions, which has nothing to do with the situation in Ukraine. I would like to warn you that if today you bang the gavel, gavel there by implementing your decision, the Albanian presidency will be tainted with an egregious precedent of violating existing practice in the Security Council, established practice for the benefit of one delegation, which time after time continues to demonstrate with support from the West that their rules don't apply to it and everything is permissible. From the beginning, Western members of the Security Council three times pushed through the participation of Vladimir Zelensky in Security Council meetings uh, through video link. This constitutes a blatant disregard for the authority of the ski body. Lead other states find time in the schedule to personally to travel in person to New York and to speak before the members of the Security Council over the course of the 75 years of the existence of the organization. The emergence and uh, presence at the Security Council speaking before the Council was viewed to be a privilege. The same applies to statements from the lofty tribune of the General Assembly. Instead of which, during the last uh, session, during the special session, uh, the representative of Kiev decided to speak through video link at the same time. Western delegations.
Russians allege that last year Vladimir Zelensky was unable to leave the country due to extraordinary circumstances. These circumstances, nonetheless, did not prevent him from traveling to the U.S. to visit Washington, and yet he did not deign at the time to travel personally to the United Nations. Colleagues, consider... Uh, this dude is spitting too much, dude. Okay, man. How about... Okay, shut the fuck up, dog. Jesus of the Christ. President, by the president of the practice of the work of the Security Council is fraud. Dude, I can't even pay attention to... Dude, he's still going. This motherfucker's going nonstop, dude. Jesus. Okay, we're done. We're done. I can't do this. Okay, shut the fuck up, dude. We start. All right. Zelensky faces Russian officials for the first time since the invasion at UN. I feel like since he's so fucking yacked, they should duke it out. The Russian, the, the Russian guys are fat. Zelensky is jacked. They should fight. And if Zelensky wins, then Russia has to leave uh, Ukraine. Okay? Super simple, super easy solution, I think. 1v1. Duel it out. Okay? Whoever wins gets to control Ukraine. Full-scale aggression launched by the state, which for some reason is still present here among the permanent members of the UN Security Council. There's already been 574 days of pain, losses and struggle. Russia has killed at least tens of thousands of our people and turned millions into refugees by destroying their homes. Most of the world recognizes the truth about this war. It is a criminal and unprovoked aggression by Russia. What are you talking about? He just cosplays as a soldier with his silly clothes? Yeah, but he's jacked. Like, he's in good shape. What do you mean? Are you going to tell me he's not in good shape? He is. <laughs> LPR and DPR are true workers' governments. This is literal socialism versus Nazism. Yeah, no, totally, man. Yeah, no, you're right. You're so right. Definitely. The The... The Ukrainian Nazis versus the LPR, DPR socialists. Like, how do you develop this perspective? Like, I don't even think fucking Russians living in on Russian soil, they get hit with that much propaganda, don't even give a shit about it that hard. Like, I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Like, I, I dick ride a lot of the Chinese uh, development, and people think, I guess people's perspectives of me is that, like, I love the CCP in the same way that these guys dick ride Russia. Okay, well, I guess they think that I also dick ride Russia in a similar capacity, so that's always funny. But, like, it just doesn't make any sense to be like, no, this is literally denazification. Like, who the fuck believes that, man? That part I will never understand, especially, like, Republicans that grew up with a deep-seated hatred of Russia and the USSR turning around and being, like, duped by a couple fucking telegrams uh like a couple telegram channels that they uh, go into to like completely undermine their their red scare propaganda like how does that happen like you're the biggest dupes somehow you know what i mean like I, it doesn't make sense <clears throat> russia against our nation aimed at seizing Ukraine's territory and resources, but it's not just that. The terrorist. Yeah, remember that Russian troop with the Totenkov badges got medals for denunciation. Yeah, that was what is his name, Denis Pashilin or whatever. Like that, that that was the that was the head of the LPR giving the fucking uh, uh, Russian troop with the Totenkov a, a medal for denunciation. Like that wasn't even. Like, that's the Workers' Council uh, uh, utopian socialist uh, formation that is uh, fighting against the, the Nazis. That's what he's talking about. That Chatter is talking about. There's a post on the Hassan. I've already complaining about you being a China and Russia dick rider, I believe. Yes, dude. I love, I love the, the Russian government. I love Vladimir Putin. I love Xi Jinping. I love it. I love it. It's my favorite, dude. Wagner guy who died along with Prigozhin at SS Tattoos uh, 2 lol. Yeah. My favorite state is willing through its aggression to undermine all the grounds of international norms meant to protect the world from the wars. And I'm grateful to all those who have recognized Russian aggression. But Russia has a socialist party that rose Putin in parliament. Are you serious, dude? You think the Russian Communist Party has any fucking sway? First of all, they also collectively were in support of invading Ukraine. So that's ridiculous. 
Okay, that's that's incredibly ridiculous. They have zero teeth, and they also personally are all controlled by Vladimir Putin. There's no aspect of, there is no aspect of of Russian uh, political formation that uh, goes beyond the grasp of Vladimir Putin. Okay, uh, Hassan rides Chinese dick because he's too cowardly to dick ride African nations. What? The Russian Communist Party is the primary opposition party to Putin. Yeah, except they have no sway. What do you mean? You think that that is like a real fucking party? What are you talking about? Damn, this guy's good.